Alright, so now we will start developing the additional workflow for the system1 application. So let's create a new folder for system1. So go to the project panel, uh, click the file explorer icon, and here let's create a new folder. New folder, let's name the folder system1, and we will uh, put here all the workflow for the system1. Now hit refresh to show that folder and the first workflow that we will develop is the system1 login. So right click in the system1 folder and select add new sequence. We will name this sequence system1 login. Then hit the create button. So the task of this workflow is to log into the Acme or the System1 application using the Acme account. We have already created an account in the Acme or in the Calculate Client Security Hash exercise. So there is no precondition but we have two in arguments. This is the System1 URL and the System1 credential. So let's open the arguments tab of the workflow and create the mentioned two arguments. So let's start with the in system system one URL. So the direction should be in and the type is string. Next is the system one credential. We will be using in direction and string type as well. So after creating the two argument, the first activity we need here is the get credential activity. So go to the activities tab and look for the get credential activity and drag it to our workflow. Let me just update the uh, activity label name. For the credential name, uh, this should be the in credential argument. And for the username and password, since we don't have a variable yet for that, we can create the variable directly from the build. So press Ctrl K from your keyboard to set the username and the password. So the advantage of doing that is the variable will have the correct data type when you create it directly on the activity field. So here for the username, it's string. For the password, it's a secure string. And now for this activity, we also need to set the orchestrator folder path property. And that should be set to shared. Alright. So the next step is to open the system one. So search for the open browser activity and drag it to our workflow. I will update the label name again. And for the URL, uh, we will be we will input the in system one URL argument. And for the browser type, make sure to select Chrome. UiPath will use the machine's default browser if you don't select one. So now we can test the workflow before adding the additional activities. But we need to assign a temporary default value to the in arguments. So let's let me just check the credential here. I will copy that and we'll temporarily assign that value to our in arguments. And for the uh, URL, I will just copy this. Right. So now we can test this workflow using run file. And it opened another uh, Google browser. So, so far it's good. Now let's continue with our workflow. Next, we need to add a type into activity to, to type the email and the password value. So let's uh, look for the type into activity. And I will 
update label name indicating the field so let's indicate the element make sure that the system one is open indicate the email text field and let's check the selector first should be good we can also use the ui explorer to check for additional attributes that we can use in this case i can add the id attribute hit save to change to uh, to save the changes hit ok and we'll type here the username variable and make sure to also enable the simulate type property next we will be adding a type secure text activity uh, we need type secure for the password variable so let's also update the label name to indicate the field now let's click this indicate to indicate the password field and for the secure text value that should be our password variable and we can also check the selector of this activity and maybe we should we could also find an id and let's select that yes it has an id and it's an excellent practice to always click validate every time you add or uh, remove attributes in the original selector as long as it is valid click save and hit ok we can also enable the simulate type property of this activity and yep should be good next we need to click the login button so we'll need we will be needing the click activity look for the click activity let's indicate the uh, button here next indicate the login button and we can also check the selector here we will be using or opening ui explorer because the current selector is too generic we can use other attributes like inner text or aa name i will be using the inner text validate and again you can use the highlight uh, function to make sure that it's indicating the correct element hit save and hit ok to save the updated selector then let's also enable the simulate click property of this click activity all right now we can test this workflow let me first close the current system one page go back to uipath and click run file all right let me see if it was successful yes it was able to log in properly now let's continue with the coding it is a good practice to validate whether the login is successful so to do that we need a reference and we will use the dashboard label for that so in our workflow uh, let us first um, collapse this activity and let's uh, look for the element exist activity drag that to our workflow let's indicate the element here and let's indicate the dashboard label let's check the selector so let's use the ui explorer to add some attributes and i will be using the hmm, maybe we can use the class as well as the inner text validate and hit save so now we have a better selector hit ok and for the output property of this activity let's create a variable we'll name it uh, dashboard label exist and next we will be adding an if activity to validate if the dashboard label exists so I'm typing if dashboard we just need the if activity and here I will again update the label name for the condition uh, we will be using the dashboard label exists variable 
And for the then block, uh, if it's true or if the condition is met, we can add a a log message. Log message. And it should be the log level should be info. Then we can just say log in success. Log in successful. Now for the else block, we can also add a log message. And here we can say an error. Log in failed. Okay. So now we can again test our workflow, but make sure to click save and let's uh, first uh, log out from the system one application and also close that page. So now let's uh, click run file to test our workflow. Alright, so here we can see that uh, in the output panel, we have a login successful message. So that's a good indication or that's a good practice for us to know if the login is successful or not. And that completes our system one login workflow. Uh, before we close this, make sure to remove the uh, default value that we assign. And after that, save the workflow and close it. We can work on the second workflow for the system one. The next workflow is the system one close. So right click again on the system one folder and select add a new sequence. We will name this uh, workflow system one close. Hit create. So the task of this workflow is to close the system one application so as a precondition, the system one should be open and log in. And for the post action, the system one is closed and log out. So the workflow doesn't have any argument. So here we can uh, start by adding an attach browser activity. And let's indicate the system one in the label. Oops, system one. And let's indicate the system one page. And we need to make the selector of the attach browser activity flexible to any of the system one page because we need to assume that this workflow could be called anywhere from the system one page. So here, let's click Edit Selector, and to make the selector flexible, we just need to replace the dashboard word with an asterisk character or a wild card character. After doing that, you can hit Validate so that even if we, for example, go to a different page like Monthly Report, this uh, selector should still be valid. So hit OK after doing that. And next is, it is an excellent practice to log out of the, the current session of System 1 first before closing the browser. So to do that, we will add a click activity to click this logout link. So here, look for the click activity. And let's update the label name. And let's indicate that logout link. Let's also check the selector. There is a parent ID. Oh, I, I, I don't use or I don't uh, usually use that kind of attributes. So I, I will be removing that. And I think we can also add the inner text. So just validate the selector. Hit save and hit OK. And then we will also enable the simulate click property. And, yep, so after that, uh, another excellent practice is waiting for the logout to complete before finishing the workflow. So if you can see here, if I click the logout, there is some time. So that might 
be dangerous if uh, the lag out is still uh, in progress and then we close the browser so the the lagging session might still be there after we open the browser again so it's a good practice to use again a reference to ensure that the logout is complete before we close the browser. So we will be using this login label as the reference to ensure that the logout is complete. So here we will be adding an element texas activity again. So that will be after the attached browser activity. So look for the element texas activity, drag that to our workflow. And I will just update the label name. And let's indicate the login label. So let's edit the selector. So it only shows H1. We need to add some attributes in there. So let's select the inner text. Click validate. And hit save. Hit OK. And for the uh, output property, we will create a variable and we will name it uh, login label xtis. Next, we will just add a lag message. We will no longer validate it, but having this element access activity in here will give us some time to wait for a reference before finishing the uh, system one close workflow. So for the lag message, we will select info for the lag level and for the message, we can say something like lag out completed and we will include or concatenate the login label exist variable that is a boolean type so we need to convert it to strings and that's all for our system one close, make sure to click save and let's test this workflow we need to first log in in the system one first and you can try to navigate to a different page of system one to check the flexibility of our attached browser selection so i tried this page now i will uh, click run file in the system one close workflow to see if this will work and yes it did all right so yeah this one should be good we don't have arguments so we don't need to remove any uh, default value so save the workflow and close it and in the next video we'll work on the next workflow